ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Gaming with me, Tony Mo, and we're here today to talk about the 1.1 update that is going to be coming to the division on April 12th. Yesterday, Ubisoft held the stream revealing incursions and everything that will be included alongside of them in the 1.1 update. Now, as I said, April 12th, guys, that's just a couple weeks away, is going to be coming to everyone who owns and plays the division, regardless of platform or whether or not they own the season pass, because this isn't just the first substantial update to the division, it is the first free update to the division. And they are planning to have more free updates mixed in with those paid pieces of DLC. If they do this right, and I feel like 1.1 is off to a good start, they could very much be pushing into the games as a service territory, which is something I want to see them do, recognizing that it's okay to ask the player to buy our DLC, to buy, you know, content that we want to create, if we are also looking to them and giving thanks, rewarding them for being the people who have helped our game do as well as it has done. So I think 1.1 is off to a good start, and that's because it's not just the introduction of incursions. There are a lot of other changes and gameplay features coming in 1.1, and that's what exactly what we're going to talk about. A lot of stuff was revealed on the stream yesterday. I've dug my way through that stream. Pull out the details, the most important stuff, and that's exactly what we're going to talk about right now. So let's kick it off with the incursion, the Falcon Lost Incursion, which is the first and currently only incursion coming with 1.1. You're going to be able to play this in two different difficulties. So we've got hard mode and challenge mode, much like the daily missions. You're going to be able to matchmake for incursions, something a lot of people are going to be very excited about. Uh, it's going to use the new gear score tool to appropriately match you with other players, and we'll talk about gear score a little bit later. Incursions, at least in this very instant, the Falcon Lost Incursion, isn't going to have any checkpoints. <laughs> That's right, there's no checkpoints. And again, let's just, we'll get through all the details, then we'll talk about my thoughts on this afterwards. Uh, you can do the incursion as many times as you like, but the first time in any weekly challenge will yield the best reward. The rewards for completing incursions will include the new gear set pieces as well as new high-end weapons now i should point out for those of you guys who were hoping for something like this ubisoft on stream did confirm there will be new named high-end weapons that's right new named high-end weapons very excited about that i also love the idea that we're going to be able to get our hands on new high-end weapons through a pure pve mission type because right now a lot of the high-end stuff is locked out at level 50 in the dark zone and i don't think that's fair to people who don't want to spend time in the dark zone or simply do not have enough time to spend in the dark zone and then also doing their dailies and doing their challenge mode missions so i i like the direction this is going so let's talk about the incursion itself they didn't reveal all the details to us and i should note that ubisoft has said in the coming weeks moving up to the release of 1.1 they're going to be talking about a few more additions that they didn't talk about on stream but there are a lot of things, particularly the things that we will find, the challenges that will greet us inside of the incursion that are being kept under wraps. But really, I mean, I think the biggest thing to talk about are no checkpoints. You know, we're talking potentially about a mission. These are four-player missions. They aren't crazy eight-person raids like a lot of people wanted to speculate. They're four-player missions that could potentially last anywhere from 30 to 40 minutes. I can't even imagine how long the challenge mode could, to, could last. You know, I've ran three and four man challenge mode dailies that have lasted 40 minutes so the incursion probably way longer than that and you cannot wipe you can die as an individual but if your whole squad wipes you got to start all over again these are potentially going to be some really grueling intense incursions these these, these missions are going to be insane i'm actually really looking forward to the idea of this and one of the things that the developers were very keen on talking about in the stream was how they wanted to push away from, you know, there isn't going to be, you're not going to be able to turtle this. This isn't about hunkering down in a corner, falling back 300, you know, feet into the start of the mission and just letting enemies funnel into you. No, no, no. That's not how the incursions are going to work. And one of the things that you may have noticed if you watch them, the incursion footage, which I will have a link to the stream uh, down in the description below, is that there weren't a lot of, like, crazy level 32 elites. There were a lot of standard level 31 enemies that you were dealing with. So it's not about just throwing bullet sponge after bullet sponge after you. It's about throwing the player into really complex combat situations that will then force them to work as a team to develop a synergy between their different agent builds that allows them to survive the length of the entire mission. It is as much about you know, moment-to-moment -moment survival and, and doing damage and rezzing each other as it is about overall endurance, you know, just being able to sustain that communication and that focus throughout the length of the entire incursion because chances are if you drop that focus, you will fail. 
It's a lot like, you know, if you play racing games, it's a lot like running the Nürburgring or the 24 hours of Le Mans in a racing game. Like insane amounts of endurance, even as an individual just playing a video game required to be successful. I love the idea of that. I think it very much puts, you know, the incursion in these missions, the word incursion, the meaning of incursion in these missions. I love the idea of this, and I'm very much looking forward to running this with my squad. Um, there are a lot of, like I said, micro objectives that are going to be happening within the length of the incursion. Some of which we saw in the gameplay included what seemed to be a wave-based challenge partway through the mission. So at one point they were actually having to fend off a numbered amount of waves of enemies. I think it was 13 or something like that. Uh, we also saw new drones that the LMB are using. It's going to be interesting, and I'm also really looking forward to, you know, seeing these new combat environments. Uh, Falcon Lost is an LMB-focused incursion that takes place in sort of the LMB's underground lair. You know, they want to be Batman, but at the end of the day, no one likes them, and they're never going to be the hero we need. Not now, not ever. So you're going to have to deal with the LMB <laughs> and sort out their thought processes. Of course... Loot is something that is very important to a game like The Division, and as I mentioned, we're going to be seeing new gear set pieces as well as new high-end weapons. So I think that's the big thing we need to talk about, are these gear sets. They didn't, again, they did not reveal everything regarding gear sets to us, but essentially gear sets are going to come in four different flavors. There's going to be four brand new gear sets. Each piece you have equipped will provide an additional bonus, and if you equip all four pieces in a set, you will get a special and more powerful talent. That talent will align two different playstyles. The four sets are focused on four different playstyles. You have the Sentry's Call, which is marksman focused, Striker's Battle Gear, which is combat assault focused, Tactician's Authority, which is electronics and support, and the Dark Zone focused gear set known as the Path of the Nomad. There's actually a Dark Zone gear set called the Path. I'm so stoked about this. Now, gear sets will not only drop in incursions, they will also drop in the Dark Zone. So, again, they're really trying to make a push for genuinely separating the PvE and the Dark Zone, giving players the ability to acquire high-end gear, high-end weapons, whether they play pure PvE or whether they engage in the DZ as well. And I like the idea of making sure that both sides, both playstyles, have the opportunity to reach for the same level of loot and equipment. That's just a must. That's something they needed to do, and I'm glad they're making a push for that. Now, gear sets are going to be colored green. Um, if you watch the stream, you'll have noticed that. I mean, they're, that's just kind of what you do with gear sets in RPGs. I just think it's hilarious that they continue to follow a lot of the traditional RPG formulas in terms of design. You know, like, yeah, we got gold, we got purple, we got blue, we got gray and green, and now we've got green gear sets. The one thing they didn't show were the talents. They did not reveal the talents to us. They've kept these hidden. I'm very interested to see what these talents are all about. I'm very interested to see how well they, you know, correlate with the different playstyles. But I think at the end of the day, my my favorite thing about the gear sets and the incursions is what seems to be a really big driving force to get players to stop turtling, to stop focusing on ridiculous smart cover builds ridiculous tank builds and you know ridiculous DPS builds and instead to focus on a variety of builds um, you know builds that can use things like the seeker mine builds that will require crowd control through the things like the flashbang grenade launcher you know there's so many elements of the game that I'm not seeing people use when I'm running with random squads when I'm seeing people in the dark zone when I'm seeing other youtubers making videos my squad meanwhile is three manning the challenge mode because we have this synergy developed between our three different agents we have a pure healer we have someone who is all crowd control that's me you know I use gadgets and I focus on using flashbangs and using the debuff on the cover to really make sure that we're constantly able to control the enemy and the amount of damage that we're able to output on them and you got someone like my brother giving positive buffs, you know, and, and making use of a more damage-focused character to really shred enemies when the time is necessary. These are the sorts of things that I think the gear sets are going to help further provide and cement, you know, more differentiated builds. Uh, builds that are built to please an individual's playstyle, but also to work hand-in-hand -hand with the other members of the squad during something like an incursion, and just the incursions themselves, which are going to require players to have that synergy and to not just sit in a corner and to not just clamp down, but instead require them to navigate the map and move and eliminate enemies in a more uh, coordinated and you know, tactical, and, you know, I guess you'd say just communicative fashion. 
I love everything going around with this and I hope the way things sound works out that way. And one of the things that I really also want to see launch aside 1.1 of course is a slew of updates. Things that resolve a lot of the bugged builds that people are able to run with. Ridiculous builds that don't make any sense because they're, you know, exploitive. Uh, builds with numbers that shouldn't be possible that are completely stripping away from the game. I mean, at the end of the day, I won't ever use those builds, but I know that they're there they, and they exist and they definitely need to be balanced. You know, there needs to be a balance between some of these talents that are... Yeah. Anyways, there's a lot of other bugs and issues within the game right now. There's some substantial ones, including the backpack update. This was not something they mentioned during the stream, and I feel that Ubisoft really needs to recognize that and confirm to the players that we know about these things and we are doing everything in our power to fix them. They can't just let it go and try and pretend it doesn't exist because it's only a couple thousand people. Only a couple thousand people? If it's a hundred people, if it's ten people, you know, who are seriously reporting this bug, you need to find it and fix it, especially if it's preventing them, preventing them from playing the game. But let's move forward, guys, and let's talk about gear score, because, of course, all of those fancy gear sets you get will now be coming with their own gear score. So the idea of gear score is that once you hit the max level of 30, item level is removed and replaced with gear score. It's going to calculate all of your gear and give you an average gear score number, which you can then match up with the recommended numbers for the different challenges, including the stuff in the incursions, and hopefully this will also alter the way that you can prepare for challenge mode in the daily missions. It's something that I'm very much looking forward to because it's a 100% accurate way of knowing whether or not you have better gear you could potentially acquire. Right now, you know, I'm running around with a bunch of high-end gear thinking my character is all fine and dandy, but I could stumble upon a backpack that crushes the one I have and then boom. Wow, dude, you know, I thought I was all set. So having a very clear number that averages your gear score and looks at the potential gear that exists in the game is one of the most accurate ways a player can find out how well equipped they actually are. And of course, it's a very straightforward way to tell the player, you are ready for challenge mode incursion, you are not ready for challenge mode incursion, so on and so forth. So I genuinely like what they're doing with the gear score. It's a very smart move. Now that's not it, guys. That's not it. As I said, incursions, gear sets, new high-end weapons, that's not everything coming in 1.1. We're also, of course, seeing the addition of item trading, which is going to be something that happens in group during, like, you know, after missions. So say you're in a group, you're in challenge mode daily, uh, you kill a boss, he gets a drop. It's another holster. You've got about 10 holsters, your buddy has none whatsoever. You can drop it and he can go ahead and pick it up. Uh, there is a two-hour time limit to trade gear after it drops. Each piece of gear can be traded multiple times within that time limit. So you can give it to Dave. Dave decides he doesn't actually need it because he remembers he had something good in his stash. So he gives it to Steve, who really then enjoys it. And everyone's just happy-go-lucky. One of the big things this does, though, is it eliminates the amount of grinding that has to occur for players to develop certain builds. I talk about this a lot with my squad last night, actually, how we each want to have multiple gear sets. You know, not the new gear sets, but actual just high-end gear sets so we can toggle our our builds more easily. So I can go from a healing build, my paladin build, to my new um, saboteur build that I'm working on, you know, more easily. The problem is it's so difficult and time-consuming to acquire all that gear, which I'm okay. I, you know, I like the idea of getting loot. I understand it can't just happen instantly. But, you know, when you just run the challenge mode mission four times a week... And you just, you know, that one player on your team is just not geared enough and it's making challenge mode a grueling, overly challenging, you know, mission type. And all he needed was a holster. It's nice to see that item trading is going to be there to resolve those situations. Moving forward, we're also seeing some actual gameplay mechanic additions. New ways to gain Phoenix credits and loot, essentially. First and foremost, we have assignments, which are basically... They're like the bounties that we saw in Destiny is the closest comparison for you Destiny players. So they're small daily and weekly quests which will require a particular goal. For example, kill a certain number of cleaners, maybe kill a bunch of LMB shotgunners. I really hope that one's on there. And I hope they call it like payback is a you know what. Because I think we all want to slaughter many, many LMB shotgunners. And then in turn, you're going to get some rewards, including Phoenix credits. So you possibly you could get some blueprints or some gear, but you will always get Phoenix credits. Again, a big push to make sure that there are more than one ways to obtain the high-end gear in the game. 
One of the issues right now for a lot of people, I think, when they hit the end game, when they hit 30, is they end up in this flux. They can't run challenge mode because they're not geared well enough, and hard mode doesn't really drop that gear, so they're forced to go into the dark zone, which isn't always, you know, a good place to get gear either. Instead, what they end up doing is they either go to the DZ, they trudge their way through that, maybe they don't even want to be there, um, in which case, they're just looking for drops because they can't acquire any of the blueprints because that requires level 50 in the DZ, or they just keep running dailies over and over and over until they acquire enough Phoenix credits to buy a piece of gear one piece at a time. This is going to give you more Phoenix credits more often, allowing those of you who are still trying to push into the challenge mode difficulty for the dailies to acquire that gear and build your agent as you see fit to then head into challenge mode. It just makes sense. Now last but not least, they haven't forgotten the Dark Zone. And not only are we going to get that brand spanking new gear set for the Dark Zone, we're going to have a new way to potentially obtain that gear set and other high-end weapons. Supply drops are coming to the DZ. Yes, yes, yes. I love the idea of this. Essentially, there are big reward drops. They will occur roughly every hour in the DZ. They are going to be protected by high-level tough enemies. And only the first person or group to reach the drop will be given the loot with no extraction required. No extraction. Yeah, yeah, I know we're excited about that. Now, one of the things they didn't really clarify was at what point your group will actually then claim that drop. Do you have to run up and activate the cache? Is there like an area of effect where you run in and your team is not a team? Because there's no doubt. These are going to be hot spots for some pretty insane firefights. I'm talking PvP activity up the wazoo. Not only are you going to be dealing with some high-level enemies, there are going to be other players and other squads rushing in to claim this gear. Things are going to get crazy, and this is a really great way to force some more player versus player interaction in the DZ. I think this could potentially be the area where some of the best squad firefights are had. You know those squad firefights they showed off way back in E3 happening in the Dark Zone? trying to make it seem like it was something that was going to happen and be really legit. They happen in the Dark Zone, there's no doubt about that, but not nearly often enough. Supply drops are pretty much a guaranteed way to drive multiple squads to one area of the map so they can do battle. I'm really looking forward to this, guys. I think this is going to be a hell of a lot of fun, and as someone who genuinely enjoys PvP in the Dark Zone, as much as I enjoy the PvE aspect of it, supply drops sound absolutely awesome, and I hope they end up working out as well as I think they will. Now last, and definitely not least, guys, we've got one more small addition coming to the game. This is very much one of those things that has been recognized by the developers as something that the community wants, and I hope to see a lot more additions to the game like this. This is going to be a spectator death cam. So no more being dead in challenge mode, staring at a wall, unable to support your team efficiently. You can now spectate your teammates, you can use the camera to call out, do call outs, and to help support them in some of those more difficult times. I imagine this is going to be exceptionally, exceptionally helpful in those incursions. <laughs> Nonetheless, guys, that wraps up everything we currently know about Update 1.1, which is just weeks away. Just weeks away, guys. And as I said, it's completely free for everyone who owns the Division. I'm very excited about this update. As I mentioned, they need to sort out a lot of the bugs that the game is having. There's some game-breaking ones for some people. This is something I hope they address in the coming weeks, and I hope that 1.1 isn't just an update, it's also one of the biggest patches they do for the game. I want to see a slew of patch notes from you guys, Ubisoft. Fix the problems, balance the game, get rid of a lot of these exploits we're seeing in the Dark Zone, and just improve the overall experience for everyone involved. Do that alongside of your free content update, and you're going to have a very, very happy community. If you guys have any questions or thoughts of your own regarding the incursions, the assignments, the supply drops, the gear sets, anything at all regarding anything we talked about in this video, feel free to throw it down in the comment section below. Really, the big thing I want to ask you guys is what are you most excited about with 1.1? Is it the incursions? Is it the new gear sets? Is it the inclusion of new high-end weapons and new named high-end weapons? Is it the supply drops, the assignments? Which element of this update or which elements has you most excited to play 1.1? Let me know down in the comment section below, and I will see you in the next one.